Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and this is our second video tutorial on SQL Server Developer Interview Questions and Answers series. So let's continue on this one. So our first question is, what is normalization? So normalization is the process to eliminate data redundancy and enhance the data integrity in the tables. Normalization helps to organize the data in the database. The core idea of database normalization is to divide the tables into smaller sub tables and store the pointers to the data rather than replicating the data itself. There are different kind of normalization forms that we will cover in the next question. The next question is what are different normal forms? So there are different normal forms available and the first one is the first normal form. The first normal form simply says that each cell of a table should contain exactly one value. So sometimes you might have seen that there can be multiple values present. For example, in the name column, we can have the first name, comma, last name. So the first normal form says that in a single field, we should contain only one type of data. Now the second one is the second normal form. For a table to be in the second normal form, it should pass two conditions. The first one is that it should be in the first normal form. And the second condition is that all non-key attributes are fully dependent on the primary key. The next one is the third normal form. For a table to be in the third normal form, it should pass two conditions. The first condition is that the table should be in the second normal form. And the second condition is that there should not be any functional dependency. After third normal form, we have the boy called normal form, which is also called as BCNF. Boy called normal form is also known as 3.5 normal form. And it is the superior version of the third normal form. It was developed to tackle certain type of anomalies which were not resolved with the third normal form. The first condition for the table to be in the boycott normal form is that the table should be in the third normal form. And the second condition is that every right hand side attribute of the functional dependency should depend on the super key of that particular table. Next one is the fourth normal form. And for a table to be in the fourth normal form, it should be in the boycott normal form. And the second condition is that it has no multi-value dependency. And the last one is the fifth normal form. A table can be in the fifth normal form if it is in the fourth normal form. And the second condition is that it cannot be subdivided into smaller tables without losing some of the information. Now our third question is, what is denormalization? Denormalization is a technique used to merge data from multiple tables into a single table that can be queried quickly. You know, in normalization, we divide data from one table to multiple smaller tables. Now to query the data, we would need to write some joining queries to fetch the data back. And if the data in the tables is huge, then it can take a lot of time to get the results. Thus to reduce the time to get the data from multiple tables, if we can merge all tables together into a single table, then the data can be fetched quickly. So this is called the denormalization. Now our next question is, what is the difference between DDL and DML commands? So the first difference between the DDL and DML commands is that DDL stands for data definition language, while DML stands for data manipulation language. DDL commands are used to create the database and the database related objects like tables, views, or indexes, etc. While the data manipulation language is used to fetch the data or insert, delete, update the data to the SQL tables. In DDL commands, we do not use the where clauses, while in the DML clause, we can have the where clause. Because in the DML queries, we can have the select queries, update queries, and delete queries, so we can use the where clauses. DDL commands can have the keywords like create, drop, rename, and alter, while the DML commands can have the keywords like select, insert, update, and delete. Now the fifth question is, what is the default constant in SQL Server? The default constant is used to set a default value for a column. The default value will be added to the field if no value will be provided. When we create a table and provide the data type for a field, then by default, if no value will be provided to that particular field while inserting the data, then a null value will be inserted. And if you do not want a null value to be inserted and want some other default value like a blank string for varchar and nvarchar data type, and a zero value for a numeric data type to be inserted, then you can use the default constraints for these scenarios. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching the video. And if you like the video, then please click the like button. Do subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.